happiness is like, it comes and it goes, it comes and it goes. You want to base your entire life and how you live your life on something that is so temporary? Make the most of this series by downloading our free workbook for a guided contemplation of this powerful surah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أم للإنسان ما تمنى فلله الآخرة والأولى رب الشحر صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Once again everybody السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته um, We're going to try to get to ayah number 28 one way or the other Let's see inshallah uh, Allah is now going to ask some rhetorical questions. Questions have a literal purpose and a rhetorical purpose. So in for those of you that are interested in uh, more advanced Arabic studies, in ilmul ma'ani, in the science of meaning, uh, there's actually something we study called the secondary meanings behind questions. So for example, when somebody asks a question, they want information. Right, that's the, the main purpose for asking a question. But there are other reasons you ask questions. For example, seriously? When you asked seriously, you weren't looking for information. You were saying, how stupid can you be? Which, by the way, is also a question. Basically, you're saying, you're really stupid. Okay? Or, for example, somebody says, are you going to eat that? Which is maybe their way of saying, don't eat that. I want to eat that. Right? But they ask it in the form of a question. Or you could say, is it hot in here? And that's your way of saying, please turn the AC on, right? So sometimes you ask questions, but you're not actually asking questions. You're doing something else, right? So this is part of the study of, of rhetoric, communication psychology. If you want to use modern language, this would be communication psychology. We call it balagha when we study the language, okay? So but the study of balagha, most of it is communication psychology. Anyway. When Allah asks the question here, أَمْ لِلْإِنسَانِ مَا تَمَنَّى Or is it that the human being will have whatever he wishes for, whatever he desires? Um, the, what's the purpose of this question? The purpose of this question is what's called, you know, here, it, it would actually be تَنْكِيرِ or it would be inkar. What, what would that imply is human beings will not have whatever they wish for. What made you think that human beings can have whatever they wish for? Allah is saying, this life is not about my wishes. And the word I keep translating as wishes is tamanni. But this word is juicy. It's really juicy. By the way, interesting play of words. What was the god of goddess of Medina that they worshipped? Manat comes from the same origin. Amlil insani ma tamanna. So it's a play on word too. At tamanni tashtahi husulul amr al marhubi fihi wa hadithu nafsi bima yakunu wa mala yakun. Tamanni's official definition, the linguistic definition is when you really want to have something happen that you desire, you love for something to happen, and you're not sure, you, you keep talking to yourself. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? I hope it happens. I wonder if it happens. I really hope it doesn't happen. Except when you want something to happen or not happen and you keep asking yourself that you live in that thought, that's actually called tamanni. Wishful thinking. One, one good way of translating tamanni would be wishful thinking. Okay? And somebody who lives, what, what do they call it? You live in la-la land? That would be tamanni. But tamanni also has some other really interesting meanings in the Arabic language. I put them in yellow here. These are al-ma'ani al-thawani, the secondary meanings. Al-tamanni actually comes, or al-ma'ani also comes in the meaning of al-qira'atu bila fiqh. When you read something without understanding, they call it tamanni also. Tamanna tala aw qara'a walakin bila fiqh, bila fahm, without understanding. Tamanni also means lying. Kathib. So I want you to make a list of these. I, I didn't write this down for you in English, so you're going to write it down. One of them is reading without understanding. One of them is lying. 
One of them is tamanni is tamanna ay sharib al khamra, drinking alcohol. Tamanni also means drinking alcohol. And mana bi ma'na ibtala. Tamanni also has the meaning of tested, to be to be put to the test. And a really interesting one, maniya actually means death. Very common word for death. It's, it's also found in some hadith. It's in shi'ir. It's in maqulat arabiya. It's in Arabic phrases and proverbs. Maniya is actually a word for death. Okay, so what do we got? Reading without understanding. We've got lying. We've got drinking alcohol. We've got being tested. And we've got death. And these are all implications of wishful thinking. Because when you're wishfully thinking, you're not really reading what it says. You're reading what you wish it says. So you're reading it without understanding it. Even when you're reading it, you're reading into it. That's tamanni. Tamanni is also lying because wishful thinking makes you lie to yourself and lie to others and lie about what you know and lie about the truth. Tamanni is also like an intoxication, a drug, like drinking alcohol because your wishful thinkings can, in, can drug you and you're just lost in them. There are, there are some people who become obsessed with something, like a good psychological manifestation of extreme tamanni could be OCD, right? Some people become obsessive compulsive. Some people become uh, obsessed with a person, obsessed with an idea, and that, that becomes their tamanni. It's like they're drunk on it, and it can lead you to death. It's, your de- it's the death of you. It's moat. So these secondary meanings are like capturing the Arab imagination about this, this deadly thing this wishful thinking, you know, that can, that can ruin a person. Here's your dad joke. Show me tamanni. Show me tamanni. Some people just don't think that's what they wish for. And why do people go to saints? Why do the people go to, because of tamanni. So Allah is asking the question. So you've constructed this entire religion and these names all because you just have these wishes? All because of your wishful thoughts? I'm little, so you really think this will get you your wishes? Allah created the human being in struggle. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ This life actually isn't about happiness. I mean, we all have moments of happiness. But even when, when nothing is wrong in your life, when nothing is wrong, everything's okay. There is no human being sitting here or anywhere on the planet that just doesn't have any negative thoughts or isn't unhappy about something even when everything is perfect because there's no such thing as perfectly happy in this life when you have everything you still wish you have something else and when you have everything you say i wish i had this sooner why couldn't this happen last year and when you have the best vacation i wish it would never end god can't you just be happy? No, I can't because I'm human. Because Allah says, Am lil insani ma tamanna. Human beings can't just have what they wish. That's not what this life is for. And the thing with TikTok is how to be happy. 20 million views. This, watch this and you will be happy. Happiness in three seconds. Oh my God. Humanity's running after one thing, which is what? Happiness. Just just running out. And the most you will get is a moment of happiness, a few seconds of happiness, a a day of happiness, an afternoon rather, not even a whole day, an afternoon of happiness, the graduation ceremony, super happy. Then you get in the car and somebody says something and all gone. Happiness is like, it comes and it goes, it comes and it goes. You want to base your entire life and how you live your life on something that is so temporary? Well, what are you saying? With that, we're supposed to be depressed all the time then? Does Islam want depression? This is what you sound like to me. That's why I say this. This is my voice for you. It represents you. Well, Islam actually b- describes that happiness is a byproduct. It's not a goal. It's a byproduct. When you're cooking the food, the smell is a byproduct. When you're living a life of purpose, then joy, you'll have more moments of joy as a byproduct. And by the way, and when you don't have moments of joy, you won't be devastated. 
you will not be devastated. There, there's an interesting rise in uh, depression rates among teenagers in the world. Did you know that? The, the chart used to be like this in the 90s and this in the 2000s. And in the last seven years, it's like this. Study the rate of depression and suicide rates among teenagers. It's gone like this. And it's the same timeline as the development of social media. As social media became more and more personalized, teenagers became more and more depressed. And why? What is the relationship? Because you see someone else and you wish you had that. You, you develop more and more tamanni. And the more tamanni you get. And you think tamanni will give you happiness. And what is the reality? The data is showing you. What is tamanni giving people? It's giving them death. Suicide rates. al maniya al maut. You read this in a classical dictionary and then you read stats in psychology papers and you're like, dang, these Arabs knew what knew their stuff. Like Allah chose this language for a reason. Amlil insani matamanna, secondary meaning is, does a human being want something that will give him death? Does a human being want a human being just want to be want to lie to himself? Does a human being just want to be drunk, deluded, self-deluded? Is that what he wants? It's such a powerful question. It's one of those wake up questions. This is one of those ayat you should put on your fridge. You know, just like let it slap you in the face. Take the alif, lam, mim, taf, taha, kaf, haya, ain, sad. Take that off that your mom put on the fridge and put this there instead. He says, we, we, we've talked about some of these things, so I'll skip. There's something called presentism. It's emerging in our world. And I want to tell you about that. Live in the moment. You don't have to listen to anything negative from anyone. They're all toxic. Don't listen to these narcissists. The fact that you can judge all of them as narcissists is your humility talking, apparently. Right? Don't, don't, don't listen to any negativity. Don't let people criticize you. Find your happiness. Love yourself. anfus. Follow your dreams. Be in the moment. Live for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Be present. These are all the positivity things that millions of people are watching and people are making money off of your stupidity. And yeah, I want to live in the moment. I want to be happy. This video will be the secret to your happiness. You've seen so many secret to happiness videos should be enough indication that it's not working. It should, should be enough indication. But you know all of this, you know what, what, why I put this under the ayah, فَلِلَّهِ الْآخِرَةُ وَالْأُولَى Let me tell you what this ayah means. Allah alone owns the final end and the ultimate beginning. The, 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 the ultimate beginning and the ultimate end is owned exclusively by Allah. Why is this ayah right after Amlil Insani Matamanna? What's the connection? What human beings wish is right now. Your wishes, your thoughts, your, your, your drunken state, your delusion is right now. It's now. And you, because you're so, because I'm so drunk in the right now, I don't contemplate what happened in the very beginning when Allah put Adam alayhi salam on this earth. And Allah, I don't think about what's coming in the akhirah. I don't look back and I don't look ahead. All I'm thinking about is what? Right now. And Allah says, Am lil insani ma tamanna falillahi al-akhiratu wal-ula. What is the Quran doing? It takes you far ahead and shows you judgment day. And it takes you far back and it shows you the previous nations and the prophets. And it shows you the beginnings of humanity. All of it to give you perspective of where you are. If you don't know where you came from and you don't know where you're headed, that means you're lost. That means you have no sense of identity. If you, if you weren't able to tell me where you came from, what your origin is, then you have amnesia. If you're not able to tell me where you're going, then you're insane. Where are you going? I don't know. What are you doing here? I don't know. Where did you come from? I don't remember. But I really want a sandwich. That sounds like you're at an insane asylum. This is, this is, this is what Allah is describing here. Someone who's drunk might be like this, right? The many have to do with being drunk also. They have no idea what they're doing in life. And this has become a common thing. What do you want to do with your life, young man? I don't know. 
what, what, like, do you know anything about, you know, your dad's life? Your, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Ask him. You know, you don't even, you know nothing about the past. You want to know nothing about the future. No sense of identity. فَلِلَّهِ الْآخِرَةُ وَالْأُولَى Allah owns that early beginning that you have forgotten. And you can forget the akhirah too, but it still belongs with Allah. Meaning where you began and where you will end belongs with Allah. You can be drunk all you want. It's like uh, the, this one of my favorite ayat about this reality. You are marching towards your master and you will meet him. You can go do drugs. You can go drink alcohol. You can go you commit adultery. You can do whatever, whatever, whatever. You can believe, not believe, pray, not pray. You're still heading towards your Rabb. And you will meet him. There is nobody who will not meet him. You will meet him. فَمُلَاقِيهِ So he says, فَلِلَّهِ الْآخِرَةُ وَالْأُولَى Knowing that Allah owns the Akhirah, by the way, it helps the believer deal with tamanni. Because you and I also have things we wish for. We, we have things we want in this life. And we can't have them. There are things that are holding us back. There are things, that, there are dhuruf, there are circumstances that prevent my wishes from being fulfilled. And I, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I trust in Allah. I love Allah. I pray to Allah. But I'm still unfulfilled. That's a reality. And you know what? When Allah says, فَلِلَّهِ الْآخِرَةُ وَالْأُولَى The people who respect the ula and the people who believe in the akhira, they can actually get, they will get what their tamanni was. They will actually have it. They can get what they wished for and more. Allah knows what you were wishing for. And in the end, He will give you what you were wishing for. Allah knows the deprivation you experienced. He knows it. The, the difference between you and the non-believer is they have deprivation and they think they can fulfill it. But after fulfilling it, they still have deprivation. And then they suffer with a new deprivation because this life is actually about some level of deprivation. Remember when we were talking about Jannatul Ma'wa, it was the same concept. The only garden will you actually have refuge from all this deprivation is with Allah. That's Jannatul Ma'wa. All the Jannat here they'll still leave some tamanni in your heart. <laughs> it's not going to fill you. It's not going to fill me. أَمْ لِلْإِنسَانِ مَا تَمَنَّا فَلِلَّهِ الْآخِرَةُ وَالْأُولَى Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Qur'an in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Qur'an in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayyana is to make deeper study of the Qur'an accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the deeper look of the Qur'an, for this surah and many other surahs on BayinaTV.com under the Deeper Look section.